Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna to talk about factoring by grouping. I am using the AirPods. I'm gonna see if it improves the audio a little bit. So just kind of testing these out. Let's see, so factor by grouping. So I have some notes here, let's see, four terms. So this is usually the, the tell that you're gonna use a factor by grouping strategy, is that you'll see something with four terms Sometimes there'll even be more than one variable. It'll be like X and Z or X and Y or something like that. But usually four terms, most of the time you're gonna use a factor by grouping strategy. So we're still gonna look for the greatest common factor in all four terms. If we can pull out a two, a three, a six, whatever we can pull out of all four of those terms, it will make the rest of the factoring go a little bit easier. So pretty much the same strategy there for all different kinds of factoring. We're always looking for that common factor in all the terms to pull out. So once we do that, or if we can't do that, we factor out the greatest common factor in the first two terms, and then we factor out the greatest common factor in the last two terms, and then from there we can complete the factoring process. So we'll go ahead and do this example so we can kind of see how this works. So four terms, as you can see, this is kind of the tell that we're gonna end up using a factor by grouping strategy. And let's see, is there a common factor between these four terms? I cannot take out an X, and I can't take out a three or a two, so there's no, there's no common factors between these four terms. So I have to just go straight into the factor by grouping. So let's see, I'm gonna factor out the greatest common factor in the first two terms. So in these two terms. By the way, terms are just things that are separated by plus or minus. So we have one, two, three, four terms in this case, right? So. In these first two terms, let's see, what can we factor out? What is the greatest common factor? We can definitely take out that three, because three times four will give us that 12. So we can take out the three. What else? We can take out x squared, right? Because these both share an x squared in common. We can take out x squared. And that should be the greatest common factor between these first two terms. So let's see now, what are we left with? We got an x here. And here we got plus four. And again, we can check this answer by plugging this back in. We got three x cubed, we get back to there, and then we have 12 x squared, we get back to there. So when you plug this back in, you should always get back to those first two terms. So now what are we left with here? X plus four. Do these have a greatest common factor? Let's see. The greatest common factor between these two, I guess technically is one, right? Because one times x will give you x. 1 times 4 will give you 4. So this is kind of a little trick you use when you factor by grouping. This is what I do. I put a 1 here, and I have 1 times x plus 4. And the reason I do this is because when you factor by grouping, when you get to this point, you're looking to... We have something here with two terms. We went from four terms to two terms. And now what we're looking to do is pull out a common factor between these two terms and be left with basically one term. It'll be two things multiplied together. So let's see, what is the common factor I can pull out between these two terms? It is actually x plus four. So maybe you can see that without writing this one. You can just write plus x plus four and that's legitimate as well. And you can see that, oh, okay, x plus four, I can take it out of here and here. But this helps me a little bit when I write out the one. All right, so what happens is I'm gonna take out the x plus four, because these two terms share an x plus four in common. So this is the greatest common factor between these two terms. So this can actually come out in front, and this can come out in front, right? And what'll be left is three x squared plus one. That's what's gonna be left. So let's go ahead and do that. So the x plus four comes out in front. And what you're left with is 3x squared plus 1. 3x squared plus 1. Now, if you want to check this answer, you can FOIL this out, and you should get right back up to here once you FOIL this out and then um, combine the like terms and stuff. But yeah, as you can see, we pulled this out in front, and what we're left with is the 3x squared plus 1 here. Right, so we just pulled this out and this out, and it stays out here. So we'll go ahead and do one more example real quick. Okay, this is our next example. We're asked to factor this polynomial. And as we can see, it has four terms, which is usually the, the tell that we're gonna use this factor by grouping strategy. So first thing we do is we look for greatest common factor in all four terms. 
In this case, we actually do have a common factor. All four of these terms are even. We could definitely take out a two, and in fact, I think that's the greatest common factor is two. So let's go ahead and take that out. So I'm basically factoring the two out from all four terms. So what's left is gonna be each term divided by two. So what's here is 12x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. And now when I plug this 2 back in, if I want to check and make sure I'm doing it right, I can plug this 2 back in and I should get back up to here. So now what do we have? We have 2 times still a polynomial with 4 terms. And at this point, it no longer has any common factors. So from this point, we have to use this factor by grouping. We're still going to factor by grouping, but this 2 is just going to chill out front the whole time. And we're going to do the factor by grouping to, to this guy in here. So we're going to look for a common factor between these first two terms and between these last two terms. And we're going to go ahead and take those out. And like I said, the 2 just chills out front the whole time. So let's see, what is the common factor between these first two terms? I can take out a 3 and I can take out an x squared. 3x squared. Let's see, what am I left with? Looks like 4x there. Left with 4x. And what else? Minus 1. 4x minus 1 is what I'm left with. All right, now let's just go ahead and do this part. Well, let's see. We have, again, it's kind of like the last example where we have a 4x minus 1 here. So we already kind of have what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and put plus 1 times 4x minus 1. And I'll close that big parentheses. There we go. I'll make sure to keep track of my parentheses here. Okay, so now we just have one more step. What we can do is we can take this out front. We can factor out the common factor between these two terms, which is 4x minus 1 in this case. So we're basically taking the 4x minus 1 and we're factoring out in front. And what we're left with is this 3x squared plus 1. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, the 2 is just chilling out front still. So we have 2 times 4x minus 1 times 3x squared plus 1. Let's see, is that what we want? We took out the 4x minus 1 to the front. We're left with 3x squared plus 1. Okay, cool. And now if we FOIL this out, we should get back to here. We'd have to FOIL this out first is what I do, and then I'd put the 2 back in. I'd distribute the 2. And we should get back to this answer. So this should be the fully factored form of this polynomial. All right, I lied. We got one more example. Just because I wanted to show an example where it's this case where there's more than one variable. So here we got x, x's and z's, and we have four terms. So this is a pretty good tell that we're gonna use factor by grouping. And don't let the z's scare you. We're gonna treat this just like we treated the last two problems. So the first thing we do is we look for a common factor in all four terms. As we can see, there is not one. We can't take out z or x or any kind of constant. So then we just go straight into this step where we factor out the common factor between the first two terms. So what is the greatest common factor between these first two terms? Let's see. We can take out a z squared. They both share a z squared. And I think that's going to be the greatest common factor. So I'm going to take out z squared. x squared plus 2 is what I have left. And I can put this back in to double check my answer. By the way, if you take out a factor and there's still something left, or there's still a common factor, then maybe you did not take out, that means you did not take out the greatest common factor, and you could still do one more step and still, so you wanna make sure you take out the greatest common factor. Okay, from here, let's see, where are we at? Okay, we're here, so let's see, we've taken out the greatest common factor in the first two terms, so now we can go ahead and do it in the second two terms. So minus, let's see, what do these two terms share? Let's see, they both have a six in common, and I think that's gonna be the greatest common factor. So I'm gonna put the six here. But this is where we have to really be careful, and this is where a lot of students make mistakes, is with the negative, with the negative signs. Because what happened here? I took out a six, but there's a negative here. So what really happened is I factored out negative six, right? Because whatever's in here, when I foil this back out, I'm distributing this negative to both these terms. 
So I have to make sure to be really careful in this case. So what's left here is still just x squared, and that'll give me that negative six x squared. But this is where a lot of students will make mistakes is they'll put minus two. And in this case, it has to be plus two, right? And we can see how this works when we, fact, when we foil it back out. We get negative six x squared minus 12, and that gets us back to where we were. So just be real careful with the negative signs. So now what do we have? Let's see, we have x squared plus two, we have x squared plus two. We have something with two terms and they share a common factor. So we're gonna go ahead and take out the x squared plus two out in front. So what are we left with? We're taking that x squared plus two out in front. And what we're left with is what's left over, z squared minus six. Cool, and we can foil this out and we should get right back up to here. And so that's going to be the final factored form of this polynomial. But yeah, thank you for watching. Leave comments, questions down below. This method is very useful when you see things with four terms. You also use it when you're using the AC method to factor trinomials. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time.